Welcome to the Blue Cafe. We offer stories of infidelity, betrayal, and redemption. Please like and subscribe. Cheers. Now, on to today's story. I slept alone last night feeling down hello again everyone. It's been a rough few weeks for me. If you haven't seen my story yet, it's in my post history. I hadn't talked to my WW about anything concerning our relationship for the last two weeks at the advice of my therapist. Yesterday, I couldn't hold it in anymore and had to get to the bottom of what was really going on. I asked her about her PA, eight years ago now, and how all of it went down. She explained most of it but a few details really struck me as sad, demeaning, and destructive. The AP in this instance was a long-time friend of hers. She spent a ton of time with him as we went through a rough time in our relationship. The devastating part to me is the way she says it started. That they were just hanging out and talking, and then he got naked. What the duck? No integrity whatsoever, how in the duck is that just a friend? I asked her to tell me what made our relationship special. You see she loves all of her friends, and has admitted being attracted to several of them. She respects them, cares for them, and values everything they do for her. And here I am slaving away, providing for a family of four, giving my entire heart and soul to you, and the love you have for me is no different than the love you have for any one of them. All this time it turns out all I have to do is listen to you, then just take my pants off, and you'll just take IT from there? So, after our conversation, I told her that I have to start focusing on what's best for me. I can't make her want me, respect me, or love me. I made her move out of the bedroom and have set up North Carolina rules going forward. It's time to rebuild my shattered self-esteem, and create a monster that can never be hurt this way again. Who knows if she can actually change. She started buying books, going to IC and has shown me she cares, but it may be too little, and far too late. Sounds like some people have some boundary issues. Moral issues. Insecurity issues. And probably some old issues of People magazine. Their issues have nothing to do with you. Let them flip the pages. Meanwhile, keep doing your thing for you. So, after our conversation, I told her that I have to start focusing on what's best for me. I can't make her want me, respect me, or love me. I made her move out of the bedroom and have set up North Carolina rules going forward. It's time to rebuild my shattered self-esteem, and create a monster that can never be hurt this way again. Kudos on not doing the pick me dance. Keep being firm in your boundaries no matter which path you choose. Look into reading No More Mr. Nice Guy. It might help you in your journey. I picked it up a while ago, and it has helped me finally choose myself. I have given her everything but at what cost? So I have to give 150% and be perfect just to be treated the same as everyone else? I'd rather just be your friend, then all I have to do is listen and duck. When you give someone that much, it's easy for them to take you for granted. They don't realize how hard it is for them to find someone else who will do that. That's part of the reason why the pick-me-up dance is so counterproductive. I understand that now, and have been a fool in love. Unfortunately, I've been made a fool of, disrespected in the worst way, gaslit, lied to, and manipulated through sex. No more. The nice, kind, caring, nurturing, charming, respectful, vulnerable guy is dying. It's time to feed the monster. Please don't. She's already taken so much from you. Don't let her take what makes you wonderful, even if she couldn't appreciate it. This made me tear up, thank you for saying it. The truth is, I have to shut down to rebuild. So much of my life has been in the service of others. I'm the friend that you can turn to for anything, anytime, and I'm there. Just never had that for myself. The weight of all of the years is finally crushing me, and I don't know how much stronger I can build my shoulders. I just lost my grandmother in March. My mother had her leg amputated recently. And now, I've lost the single most important relationship I had ever had. 
I've been drugged through hell, and left for dead. There's so much more in my history that haunts me, and I have to build a better me again. High up, like others have already stated, she's got an issue in regards to boundaries, morals, integrity and foremost prioritization. One hint, don't call yourself a future monster, call yourself the grey rock which will stay steadfast in his stance and fight for his beliefs and values. This way you maintain the high road always. I understand from where you are coming, but trust me, I survived a war of roses solely with a smile, my ex, or the one which parks her broom in front of her house, hated my guts for the sole fact that she couldn't grow under my skin and my quiet smile was the punishment for her. You sound grounded, a tad disillusioned, but if she wants to change, then she should work on her priorities first. Meaning, my husband, my kids, my family, husband and kids again, then my bloodline, then my in-laws, then close friends, then friends and lastly all who call themselves friends but are in reality acquaintances at best. When I did read this, it stung bad, you do deserve so much better. Her spleen of being everybody's love or girl has screwed with her head bad and that only can get undone if you keep the North Carolina rules alive, 180 her, grey rocker, be cordial when it comes to the kids and her approaching you wanting to work on herself and proving through action, that she's working on it and working on it for good. Only the show me principle will help her gain a footing at best. But I fear and as you closed your poster too little too late. Thanks for this, I appreciate the reply. When I say I'm building a monster, I mean I'm turning into something I've never been. I harbor deep resentment, envy, and hurt the kind of which I've never felt. I'm walking in my heart for the first time, and it is breaking me. I don't mean I'm going to become vile, repulsive, or angry. I mean I'm going to stop loving, adoring, and being kind which has been my nature all along. I like the way you make the grey rock seem like a superhero. I've always felt like the hero in many ways, but now I need to be the monster. I understand where you are coming from, and I wasn't thinking of you turning mean, heinous, or vile. But the mind is a wonderful and scary thing. If you think of that new you in terms of a monster likely you will have the probability to be one. Be the change, stay stern if you need to be, tell her and the world, here's the line in the sand, and don't you dare cross it, because behind that line is me and my values. In my view it is a monster, one that I have to build to carry me forward. It's not forever, but a temporary solution to a temporary tragedy. No one is going to see the broken me again, but sadly for now the good guy goes too. Keep the good guy there for the people who deserve to see him and experience him. Keep the monster there for everyone else. Your soon-to-be ex-wife is now officially in the everyone else pile. I think you need to learn to love and respect yourself which is what you are starting to do now. I suspect because of your re-a a long time ago you have been beating yourself and in course letting your wife feel she doesn't need to love or respect you. Her actions seem to strongly suggest this and deep down you both know you didn't have the courage to make her do the right things like IC and perhaps MC together. Maybe there is still hope but there seems to be a lot of baggage that you seem to struggle to let go. She seems also aware her safety net might be compromised thus the reading of books etc when this should have been done years ago. I think treating yourself as number one and doing what is best for you may be a wake up call and either way you have nothing to lose. Whilst I hope you can both get to a peaceful place if this doesn't materialize you have still done enough to elevate yourself on a personal level so a win win situation for you. Good luck. No offense but you should write to the r slash surviving infidelity sub again. And this time pay attention to what advice they give you. These are not just jaded slash butthurt people you know. They have gone through the same thing you have or are still going through it and can actually help you. Allow them to be of help to you. Look at how things progressed the last time you shunned their attempt to do that. Do you want that situation to repeat itself or turn worse, and it can turn worse, trust me, there's always a way for things to go deeper into the deep end. Keep ignoring their advice, once again, no offense, neutral face. Oh yeah, I know, and thank you for that. 
What I wrote in my original post was wrong, I didn't mean it to come off the way it did. I've always looked at this from the angle of wanting to reconcile, and didn't want to hear what the folks over there were saying. Unfortunately, for me, I needed to learn the hard way. You can do this op, whatever the outcome. Good luck and please keep updating when you can. It will be good for you, especially when things are hard, neutral face. I'm sure you hear this all the time but. Post separation. You were right, all of you. I was here a year ago in a state of panic, trying my best to hold on to the last pieces of my dying self. I was broken, lost, confused, and freshly betrayed by my WW of 15 years. I wasn't ready to hear the truth. I didn't want to hear that I had married a serial cheater that was never the person I held so dearly. I wasn't ready to hear how I would be used, and taken advantage of for her own personal gain. I told myself every one of you were just jaded. After all you couldn't possibly know my person, our history, or the love we shared together. Oh how blinded I was by my own self-righteousness. I tried for 9 months to rebuild the life we had. I gave all that I had to hang on to the past and not recognize the present for what it is. I was a fool, and am finally pulling my head out of my ass and rebuilding myself. Pulling myself out of a deep dark hole that I am solely responsible for placing myself in. I don't know how I let it get this bad, or what in the hell happened to my sense of self-worth. I am a proud, confident, and strong man, not some soft pick-me chum. To anyone reading this, coming to this sub for the first time, know this, the people here have a wealth of group knowledge that will serve you well if you take their advice to heart. They are not jaded, ruined, or spiteful. They have seen your story, and heard it a hundred times. And I'm sure just like me you'll think they're wrong. After all they couldn't possibly know right? Don't make my same mistakes, and start taking back control of your life before the darkness is all you have left. Much love to all of you in this club that nobody wants to belong to, and thank you for the compassion and help along this journey. I'll update sometime soon on how things are actually going in my life, I just haven't got the stomach to do so now. I think of the scene from A Christmas Carol slash Scrooge where Marley shows Scrooge all the ghosts of rich men trying to throw money at a living homeless person but no longer have the power to help. Reddit is basically like Marley and the ghosts. Can't guide you perfectly. We can guide a bit, but we are all doomed to make some of the mistakes while battling emotional attachment to a former life slash love. It is okay that you weren't ready back then to face the situation you found yourself in. Such pain and betrayal is processed differently by everyone. Don't hold it against yourself that you tried, some people need that so that they are able to move on, maybe you are one of them and that would be okay. The only thing that would never be okay would be, if you don't take care of your kids properly. Everything else can be worked out. Good to hear that you are moving on and are finally able to leave her. By that you give yourself the chance to live a life that you want to live and where you can find something in it that can fill you up with what you need. Are you already divorced from her? How is the custody with the kids arranged? Do you have someone around you that supports you in your way forward? Not divorced yet, but will be filing soon? We have been separated since March, and she has moved 100 miles away. I have had my boys full time with her visiting every couple of weeks. She doesn't call them, or really seem to care anymore about how we are. It's sad and difficult to watch. No real support where I live, as we move to be closer to her family who are terrible. After the divorce finalizes though I plan on moving much closer to my family and friends. Got a ton of support from them, but they are at least an hour away. Got one hell of a mess, but it will get better. Then make sure to document very well how she is neglecting her own kids, so that she can't turn that around on you in front of a judge. I wish you all the best on your way forward. Absolutely, but who knows what the duck will happen in the crazy court system we have now. I'm hoping for full custody and a clean divorce, but I'm in a no-fault state. Thank you very much, I could use all the help I can get.
even though you are at a no-fault state, if you document it really well how often she has seen the kids, reached out to the kids and asked for updates about the kids, then a judge will surely be recognizing that. Her cheating might not matter but if you can prove that she is not even interested in how her own children are doing, then you have a way better chance at getting the majority of custody, which you will need if you want to relocate with the kids after the divorce. At best you meet with a lawyer and get all the information you need to be best prepared for when it comes to the divorce and the custody of the kids. What you will need is Call logs to document how often she has reached out to the kids on her own accord. All text messages between you and her to prove how often she has reached out to you in regard to the kids. Write down every single time when she comes to the house to spend time with the kids. Write down when she moved out of the house and where she moved to, the distance she herself put between her and the kids, at best with proof. If she could have moved somewhere else that would have been closer to the kids, then write that down as well to highlight that she had the chance to stay close to the kids but didn't want that. And most of all, highlight every single time when you reached out to her because something was going on in the kid's life, doctor appointment, school events, the masking for mom, and when she either hasn't replied or replied that she doesn't care and you need to take care of it alone. If possible, then also write down how much money you have spent on the kids since she moved out and how much she either spent for them or offered you so that you can take care of them. Thanks for the advice. I have all texts and messages saved, as well as had Mighty save the messages he has gotten. In three months time there have been four to five to him, and around the same to me. I'll definitely document the rest, any idea how best to do this. Make screenshots of the call logs and all the texts. Highlight here the times when you asked her for something or informed her about something and she didn't reply or wasn't interested. Much more important here are not the times she has reached out to the kids but the times when she hasn't reached out to them. So if your kids have texts that they send their mom but that they never got answered, then save them as well. If you have any texts or something like that about where she is living right now, where is her mail getting sent to? Then save that too. Regarding the money, save your money transactions from the bank account since she moved out. Check if she has sent any money or put any money into that account, that you could have used for the kids. Then think back and try to remember everything you brought for the kids. Food, clothes, toys, books, school stuff, teachings, whatever. If you can show that you carried the financial burden alone, then you show the judge two things. First of all, you are capable of taking care of the kids alone and second, she is not interested in supporting your kids financially. The best way to document that all is something that a lawyer can tell you. I'll have no problem proving myself financially as I've been the sole provider for six years now haven't received a penny toward their care, and don't expect to as she doesn't work as far as I am aware. She's been living off of her half of our savings and tax return until this point. I will definitely consult my lawyer as soon as I have the retainer money ready. I hadn't thought about the call logs at all, that is a great idea. I'll print them out tonight. Oh man, reality is going to hit her really hard sometime soon after divorce settlement won't be the last you hear from her. I have no doubt that this is gonna be one hell of a roller coaster ride moving forward, but it will all be worth it in the end. We hope you have enjoyed today's episode. Please comment, like and subscribe. Cheers. Have a wonderful day or night. Wherever you are.